What's up guys, Chinzo here. And I recently found the perfect opportunity to install some upgrades on my travel trailer. Uh, how beautiful. So nice to be in nature. What the so as you can probably tell, I am not at an RV park at the moment. I'm actually back at my home base in San Antonio, and I've got a bit of a layover before I get back on the road for my next travel job. But my next road trip is going to be by far my longest, so I've got a few things to do before I get back on the road again. I've got the trailer parked in the driveway behind me, and this fit is about as tight as it gets. But while I've got the convenience of having the trailer so close to my garage, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to install some accessories and upgrades, and I'm happy to have you guys along, so let's do it. Here's a quick look at some of the accessories I'll be installing over the next few days. But first, I'll snap on this coupler lock from Master Lock. I'd consider this a budget lock at 27 bucks, but it's bright red, installs quickly, and adds another key to my extensive key collection. As a budget lock, it's definitely not foolproof, but it's a reasonable deterrent, and I usually park in front of my trailer anyway for added security. Next up, we'll head indoors for a showerhead upgrade that came highly recommended by many in the RV community. So I'll be installing the Oxygenic Showerhead. This is the Fury RV model. It's in stainless. It's got five different settings, and it's advertised to infuse the water with oxygen to give you a better flow. And overall, it's just better looking than the one I've got right now. So let's go ahead and get it popped in and uh, see how it looks. The setup on this one was really quick and easy. The shower head was only about 40 bucks and installed in less than 15 minutes. This was definitely the biggest bang for buck upgrade so far because the improvement in quality was quite dramatic. So now that I've got these shower heads side by side, you can tell there is definitely a difference in quality between the two. The head on this one is much bigger and the mounting hardware for the Oxygenics is definitely much beefier. Um, it did come with some mounting hardware. Got some double-sided 3M tape here, which I don't think is going to be enough to get the job done. And then they also provided some really long screws, which I think is too much for this job. So I went ahead and kept the original hardware that the last owner used. Looks like he just had kind of one little wimpy screw and one beefy screw paired with an anchor. So I'm going to go ahead and try to reuse this stuff. It looks like I'll have to remove this piece to access that little hole right there. And um, I'll probably have to drill another hole. Before installing this, be sure to seal up the old hole with silicone. And also be careful not to lose any of the provided rubber washers. There's one on each side of the hose and another sneaky one on the inside of the head mount. really nice but now's the real moment of truth let's uh, see how it works oh <laughs> yeah that's got some power very nice um, I can definitely say this is a huge improvement over my stock shower head oh yeah it's good it's real good and I think it's also time to replace this as you can tell, it's already starting to flake and whatnot. While I was in the shower, I took a few minutes to replace the skylight cover. Fortunately, the previous owner left this huge roll of reflective material. So I used the old reflecty stuff to cut out a fresh piece of new reflecty stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in. And by the way, if you know what this reflecty stuff is actually called, feel free to drop a comment down below because I feel kind of ridiculous calling this reflecty stuff all the time. All right, so next up, we've got a lighting mod for the storage compartments. First, you'll need some command hooks, and it's important to have the ones that flip in and out. You'll also need some Gorilla Glue and one of these little camp lanterns that I ordered off Amazon. I'll drop a link to these as well. Um, I've seen quite a few different lighting mods for the storage compartment, but I went this route because this is pretty much what I had on hand, and this works pretty well for what I need. And the reason I included Gorilla Glue is because it didn't really adhere to this plywood so well. Um, so I put a little bit of Gorilla Glue because I knew I was going to keep it there for a while. If you tend to stack this storage compartment completely full, this might not be the best for you because it does take up a little bit of space. But for me, the benefit of being able to pop this lantern off and kind of walk it around the campsite is a really big plus for me. And this actually provides quite a bit of light. I'll show you guys what it looks like at night. So like I said, the benefit of this particular lighting mod is that you can grab it, walk it around the campsite, 
to make sure you don't bump your head, stub your toe, that sort of thing. The next accessory is not the most glamorous or unique one on the list, but it's definitely necessary. These mesh screens cover your furnace and water heater vents to prevent debris from clogging them up. If you're familiar with mud daubers, you know they tend to build these little mud houses and I definitely don't want them living rent free in my vents. This 3 pack of screens costs less than 20 bucks and comes with its own springy clips and its own installation tool. Snapping these on only took a few minutes and I actually think they look kinda cool. This next one falls more in the maintenance category, but I'm including it because I've only recently become aware of its importance. And if there's a newbie out there watching this, hopefully they'll find this useful. Replacing your water heater anode will help prevent rust buildup in your water heater, and it's pretty easy to install. For that I'll need a 1 16th socket, extender, and plumber's tape. From the looks of the old one, this was long overdue. I'd recommend ordering a multi-pack to make it easier to stay on top of this. And there's also a specific hose attachment to help blast out all of this gunk. You can use a sprayer in a pinch, but I'll drop a link down below for you. So I watch a lot of these RV accessory videos and it turns out it's a pretty common video topic. But what I really enjoy is seeing how each YouTuber takes the topic and kind of adds their own twist on it and makes it unique. I wanted to add one custom accessory that you probably won't find in any other RV accessory video. And while I'm home, I've got access to my art studio and all of its resources. So I thought I'd do something creative. I'm just gonna take some of these custom stickers, apply them to these little wood slices, cover them with a coat of resin, add some of these felt strips, and then boom, you've got your custom coasters. I already use these as coasters in my art studio and all over my house. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to bring that into my travel trailer and kind of add that homey and custom feel to the interior of my trailer. The resin application and curing process takes about 24 hours. We'll come back to this one, so be sure to stick around until the end to see how these come out. And if you have any questions about the process, feel free to ask. In the meantime, let's jump into one of my favorite upgrades so far. The next upgrade I've got is the Level Mate Pro. Once the Level Mate Pro is installed, it should allow me to electronically monitor how level my trailer is using an app on my phone instead of using a traditional level. Originally, I thought the installation would be complicated and technical, but it turned out to be fairly straightforward. After connecting the device to the app, I just had to find the right place to mount it and then test the connection. Then I just followed a few more steps through the app. So I'm just gonna hit this switch down here. Got two beeps, and now I'm gonna go ahead and link it up with the app. All right, so the next step is to mount this to a vertical surface using the provided glue strips. Then I'll pull my truck ahead of the trailer as if I'm towing it, and uh, we'll check the signal strength between the device and my phone. And I'm mounting this in the storage compartment on the driver's side. I figured this would be the ideal place because it would be easiest for me to get in and out of my truck and to switch this thing off and on when I need to. And if this goes well, I'll go ahead and screw it in place. So the good news is the signal strength is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the provided screws to go ahead and set this sensor in place. The provided glue strips did not hold up so well, so I had to improvise a little bit to keep it up there. And I also had to crawl in from the passenger side storage compartment door because I'm right-handed and uh, that's the only way I can get some torque on these screws. Then I just followed a few more instructions through the app to complete the setup. I actually think those coasters came out pretty good. Let me know what you think. But that should do it for this one, guys. I'll be heading to Phoenix very soon and I'd love to have you guys join me. So be sure to stick around and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next adventure. As always, thanks for watching, stay stoked, and I'll see you in the next one.